You heard it from the senator. This time he's going to win. Does he have a path? You have been very close to a lot of these elections. You've been you actually overseen them as head of DNC. Does he have a path to victory? He does, but it's a tougher path than it was before, because before he automatically being the only real progressive candidate in the race, he inherited that mantle. Now he's got already in the race Kamala Harris, uh, Cory Booker. Um, Elizabeth Warren. So he's got uh, uh, to share the progressive voters that are out there. The last time he got almost 13 million votes. So you can say there are 13 million reasons why Bernie Sanders ought to be considered a serious candidate. And there are. But some of those people are going to be peeled off by Harris or Warren or Booker. So it's a tougher road to hoe. But eventually, the field will winnow down, my guess is, to one conservative or moderate Democrat and one progressive Democrat. Will that be Bernie Sanders? It could be. And if it's him versus a moderate centrist, who knows who, who will win? But there's a path for Bernie, but it's not as easy as the last time. So I think, Governor, we have a sense of who the uh, more progressive candidates, as you'd say, besides Bernie Sanders, the Elizabeth Warrens of this world are. Who are the more moderate centrist candidates that are out there right now from your point of view? Well, right now, among the current announced field, it's Amy Klobuchar, who did brilliantly in her town meeting on Monday night, who uh, showed that she's willing to tell the truth to the American people about what can be accomplished and what can't be accomplished. She's not going to make false promises. She's the leading moderate right now. But of course, we haven't heard from Joe Biden. We haven't heard from uh, Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, John Delaney, the congressman, has been in Iowa for a year. So th there might be Governor Bullock, for example, of Montana, who certainly is a centrist Democrat. We haven't heard from a, a number of potential centrists yet. But Amy Klobuchar is doing an excellent job flying that centrist, just slightly left of center. Batter. And this is the point in the discussion where I need to say Michael R. Bloomberg actually is the founder and owner of Bloomberg for whom we work. So everybody yeah. understands, in case everybody uh, has missed that point. What we've been talking about so far is how you can get the nomination. Someone will get the nomination, whether they're progressive or they're more moderate, they will get the nomination. What about getting elected in the general? And specifically, let me focus on one aspect. Bernie Sanders is very proud of being what he calls a democratic socialist. President Trump has been pretty explicit about socialism. Listen to what he had to say in the State of the Union address. We are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination and control. We are born free and we will stay free. So, Governor, because you're on your remote, you might not be able to see the fact that that camera then during that applause cut to Bernie Sanders, who is not looking too pleased about it. But from your experience, from your expertise, is there room for a win in the general election for president of the United States of someone who says they are a socialist? It would be much harder. Look, if Donald Trump is the issue in the 2020 election, if, if he's the issue, he loses. In 2018, he made himself the issue. And 9 million more people voted for Democrats in Congress than before. In 2016, Donald Trump lost the popular vote by 3 million. In 2018, he lost the popular vote by 9 million. Now, Donald Trump and his handlers are smart enough to know they can't win on their own benefit, touting with their accomplishments. So they're going to have to attack and scare the American people about who the Democratic nominee is. I said in a column that I wrote three days before the State of the Union address that what the Trump strategy is going to be is paint the Democratic Party as extreme left socialist. And then the president made that statement in his State of the Union. They're going to try to sit there with a calculator and ch chalk up every promise that a Democratic candidate has made and say, well, they promise this, they promise this, they promise this. It's going to cause the average family of who makes $60,000 a $4,000 tax increase. They're going to say that whether it's true or not, but they're going to have some credence for it if we overpromise. We can't overpromise. We can't be a socialist party. We've got to be a party that we've always been, 
party that believes in capitalism, but with some government oversight and controls that protect working people and the poor and vulnerable in this country. Governor, so far we've been talking really about the politics of 2020. Let's talk about one thing at least of substance, and that is the national debt. I'm going to put a chart up here for people who can see it uh, that just indicates U.S. debt as a percentage of GDP. And you know the numbers because you have really been outspoken about this subject. It has just climbed enormously. Uh, it's on my terminal, actually. You can pull up from my terminal the debt of the United States government. Uh, how can you even get that item on the agenda? In 2016, I don't remember that either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump even addressed this issue. Here's the problem with making the debt a political issue. The debt's going to come home to roost in 15 years, 20 years. The candidates are more interested in talking about what they're going to do in the next year or two. And you have people who say that that doesn't matter, but it does matter. And even to my progressive friends in the Democratic Party, if we want to keep doing the federal safety net, we've got to deal with the debt because the debt is going to erode our ability to have any discretionary programs. It's going to rip apart whatever the, is left in the safety net because we're not going to have money. Our party's talking about increasing the benefits under Medicare and Social Security. Well, how are we going to do that if we can't pay for those programs? We have to do something like Simpson Bowles. We have to sit down and get serious about the debt, and that's something we've got to do. The only way we're going to do it is in a bipartisan fashion. And Governor, it can't be one party or the other. And finally, let's talk about one other thing that I know you think we've got to do something about a lot of people do, and that's the opioid crisis in this country. It's something that is really something you feel strongly about. What can we do? to try to turn this thing around? Well, it is shocking. In Philadelphia in 2017, 1,217 people died of drug overdoses. Most of them started out with opioids, regular prescription drugs, and went on to fentanyl or, or heroin or the like. And Philadelphia is not an exception. It's more the rule. We've got to do something, and we need an all-out attack. We need to attack pharmaceutical companies who dump far too many prescription drugs into this country. We need to attack doctors who willy-nilly give out prescriptions for a hernia after a hernia operation for 25 Percocets. You don't need 25 Percocets. You probably don't even need Percocet. You can do Tylenol extra strength. We've got to do something about having more Narcan available so that people who do OD on drugs have Narcan available with someone who can administer it almost instantaneously. So it's an all-out attack. We have to do a lot of different things. We've got to educate. We've got to have treatment programs. And we've got to get serious. We've got to get serious. This is killing far more people than we're losing in Afghanistan and Iraq.